What is the best encounter you've ever had with a complete stranger? I was walking along a sidewalk in Midtown when there was a sudden heavy downpour. A kind man nearby shared his large umbrella with me all the way to my destination 9 blocks away. It was a simple act of sharing and kindness that I'll never forget. I would suck his dick in the next alley. What an awesome guy. Edit. Thanks for the awards. Never thought that I would be awarded for a BJ comment. Lol from wholesome to filthy in 3 seconds flat. I was driving down a 3 lane highway in my old Taurus station wagon. Unrelated but it's a very ugly car. And 2 other people driving old Taurus station wagons pulled up next to me. For a brief moment we were lined up perfectly across all 3 lanes. Just 3 Taurus station wagons aligned on the highway. We laughed and waved at each other then drifted away. The absurdity of the moment plus the fact that the other drivers also recognized it happening and shared the amusement is what makes it for me. Lmao oh my mom had one of those when we were kids. So ugly. But this sounds like a cool experience. My wife and I were traveling in Tokyo and we were looking for a good non-smoking restaurant. A lot of them still allow smoking unfortunately in the neighborhood we were staying. Most restaurants in that neighborhood were only advertised with discreet Japanese signs. We are white Europeans and looked obviously like tourists. This Japanese guy comes out of nowhere asking if he could help us. So we tell him what we are looking for. Turns out that guy had been working in Germany for a few years. So he could speak English fairly well. He helped us find a traditional upscale restaurant only visited by locals. Hidden on the 8th story of a skyscraper that we would never have found in a lifetime. The best part is that he obviously liked to chat with us. It reminded him of his life in Europe. Comma. And asked if he could join. We gladly accepted. And he helped us with how to behave and take our order. It turns out that guy was a high level consultant for an accounting organization. And he insisted on paying the bill. So we got to eat in a very high end restaurant that no tourist would have ever found and didn't even pay for it. A guy saw me pay my last $2 for bus fare that wasn't going where I needed to go and threw his bus pee butt out the window to me as they drove off. She was my Uber passenger. My car was rear-ended by a hit and run driver. She bought me 10 piece chicken McNuggets. I fully hope you had enjoyed that 10 piece chicken McNuggets. I went for an interview for a residency program. The programs usually interview multiple people per day at the same time. Everyone is so nervous sitting around prior to the interview that no one talks. For one of my interviews, there were only two of us. The other girl came up to me and we both started talking about how nervous we were. She hugged me and said well, you seem really nice. I hope we both match here and get to work together. After the interviews were over, she hugged me again and said she knew we would be friends in the future. It was an interesting interaction to say the least. Funny thing is, neither of us matched at that site, but ended up matching together at another program. She is one of the nicest slash kindest people I have ever met. Definitely my work bestie. Uck. I was at this blues dance at a scene I'd never been to. Dancing with a lot of strangers, and it was so fun. But this one guy just clicked with. We had 3 dances that night and each one worked perfectly. Not a foot wrong or a miss followed lead or a missed I'm turn on. Ugh bliss. Just pure. Human. Connection. Someday I hope to return to that dance and do it again. As a line D hop and blues dancer. I totally get this vibe. I was at a line D event in a scene I'd never been to and had the most fluid fast line D dance I've ever had. I've always felt real awkward and anxious with fast line D but it just flowed so well I felt like I was sparkling. I was traveling around the US on my motorcycle and I stopped at this bar in South Dakota somewhere for a bite and this guy sat down next to me at the bar and we both drank a beer quietly beside each other before he struck up a conversation. He was super friendly and had a draw that I couldn't place. Sounded like an Oki. He was traveling around the country too in his helicopter. Just flying around the country stopping and getting a beer here and there. Same thing as me, except I was on a bike. I found this super odd. We chatted forever and got a flight of beers eventually trying pretty much all the beers they had on tap. The oddest part was that this guy could not get over that he had an electric rental car. A Prius. Like he didn't even know such things existed. 
so we went out to the parking lot and he showed me how quiet it was, Prius had been around for a while at this point. It was not a new technology and I'd driven plenty of them at this point. He was amazed that it could drive and be completely quiet. I also found this odd considering the guy was flying around in a rotor seemingly just for fun. Anyway we parted ways and he was just so nice and happy he left me in a good mood for a couple days. Sturgis? Nav wasn't around that time or that area. Been to Sturgis once. That's more than enough for me. I gave a ride to a guy who came up to my work the day after New Year's. It was getting dark, raining, and in the low 30s. I couldn't let him walk the 5 plus miles back to town. Usually we only get addicts and loomers out in the woods where I work. But Alan was different. He's a carpenter. From New York. Just a guy whose heart lies on the road and doesn't stay anywhere long. His phone had died and he couldn't Uber back to his hotel. Instead of the usual small talk he pressed right in asking so what it is that defines you. What makes you. You. And from there we talked about life. Passions and focused on the bright points amidst the darkness of the previous year. When I dropped him off he pulled out his wallet at my protest. But instead of cash handed me one of those little sayings that gets clipped to the end of tea bags. The last few months have been extremely rough for me. Between the phrase and the conversation. The whole experience was uplifting. Somehow reassuring and a bit surreal. There is nothing like you. There was nothing like you. And there shall be nothing like you. Once. Before we were married. My wife and I were in Chicago on a trip and decided to head to the Garfield Park Conservatory on our last day. As we walked in, this sweet old man who didn't seem to speak much English was outside smoking by the door. He saw us, smiled, looked up from his cigarette, and said to us what a pretty pair. He was talking about her tits. I was traveling back home from USMC boot camp with all my stuff. Since you start off at the lowest pay scale and you pay for your uniforms and gear, and have to buy your travel tickets to be reimbursed later, I had nothing in my bank account and just a bit of money on me. Got off at a New York City bus station and someone dressed similar to staff helped me carry my gear, and then near a secluded area, demanded a tip, so I gave like the 5 or 10 bucks I had, a type of scam I didn't know about. Went to get my ticket for my next bus, only to discover it had fallen out of my pocket. I had to backtrack with all my stuff, and couldn't find it, and realized I likely lost it on the bus, which was now gone. Since it was like 11 at night I called my mom, and explained I had no money, to get a ticket from the station to the one back home. So she was trying to find a western union within walking distance for me to get home. But they didn't open until the morning and were a few blocks away from where I was. I sit down in a waiting area, again dragging a dress back holding my good uniforms, my giant green duffel, and a camo bag with all my gear. At this point I'm doing my best to hold in tears and not panic when a guy started chatting with me because he saw my uniform stuff. Talks about how he is in the reserves for either the army or national guard. I forget. He sees I'm upset and asks what is wrong and I explain my situation. He asks me where I'm from, and trying to head to We chat for a bit longer, and I calm down, but I'm still reeling, so I hold my head in my hands and look down. He comes by and starts talking to me again, and he is holding a ticket with my hometown as the end destination and a little cash. Tells me he remembers what those first checks were like, and wishes me luck. I can't believe it, and thank him and tell him I don't need the money, but he insists I keep it to get something from a vending machine at some point since the next bus the ticket was for didn't leave until early morning. Seeing how exhausted I was he told me he'd watch me and my stuff while I slept, and he'd wake me when he was leaving for his bus. So I laid down on my duffel and got a few hours of sleep before he woke me up. He never gave me his name or address despite me asking, so I could send him money the next time I got paid. I have never forgotten how he made me feel on one of the worst days I had ever experienced in my life. I met a guy on the bus one day. He and I looked very much like brother and sister. Very much. We talked for the whole bus trip, each of us opting to miss our respective stops. We ditched our plans and spent the whole day together at the beach. Just talking and walking. Our connection was immediate. It was an amazing day. We never saw each other again. But I never forgot.
I put off changing my name after getting married until my son was born a year later. I had to trudge all over downtown with a newborn in tow to get a copy of my marriage license, go to the DMV, and finally social security office. It was at the social security office that my son decided it was time to eat. I started to discreetly nurse him, and a security guard looked in my direction. Hey, you can't do that here. Two women jumped to my defense before I could even look up. That is a federally granted right. She is feeding a baby. Are you against babies eating? Exclamation mark. You keep nursing that baby. Honey, it's a gift. The security guard gave them a weird look and tapped on a lady's shoulder in a seat two rows ahead of me. Mom, you cannot make phone calls inside. It wasn't even about me. But these two ladies jumped to my defense. I greatly appreciated it. I thanked them profusely. One guy was playing one of those word puzzles on his phone on the train. He was stuck on one of the words I chimed in and told him the word and then everyone inside the train block started telling him the words and it was a really cool experience because people usually keep to themselves in a train journey. However my one suggestion was a sort of an icebreaker for everyone. Was waiting at the airport for my flight. It had been delayed 2 hours. It was a full flight so almost all the seats near the gate were taken. There was one last empty seat next to me. So this older woman, Mary, asked if she could sit there. She was very friendly, and we ended up talking about life and our relationships for almost the entire two hours. My mother had been a very cold and toxic person. Mary's daughter had passed away from cancer years earlier. It was a very cathartic two hours for both of us. She shared stories and life lessons she hadn't had the chance to tell her daughter before she died. I told her about things I could never have told my own mother, and she gave me very honest, compassionate advice. Wish she'd gotten her number or an email. But I was afraid of overstepping at the time. In a mosh pit by myself, I happened to catch a show while on vacation. I'm a 5 feet 2 tiny chick so, while I can and do hold my own. Sometimes the crowd squashes me, and this one was one of those push in tight pits, and I was literally getting squeezed. Two random dudes who were each a foot taller than me grabbed me up and got me between them and acted like human barricades while I caught my breath. They were total gentlemen and did it just to be awesome. But one of them them was really cute and I seriously wished I had been single at that time. People at hardcore and punk shows are way nicer than people outside the scene might expect. I was at a club with some friends and the night was going poorly because my friend's birthday dinner reservations got cancelled and the club was insanely busy so we couldn't even get drinks. I started dancing to lighten the mood and no one was really joining in much so it was literally just me. Then a random girl came up to me and told me I looked so to kinghood and to keep doing me. Honestly the best compliment I've ever gotten. I wish men got more compliments from women. As a dude. I can't express how good it makes you feel. I still remember positive things women have said to me years later. I stopped cutting my hair because of covid. I was going to cut it because it got way too long. But then one random girl told me she liked my hair so then I didn't. Then it got longer and I was definitely going to cut it. But then another girl told me she loved my hair. Let it grow more and then guys started giving me compliments too. Then a fifth girl told me she loved my hair. Anyway, because of that one initial compliment from a girl I now have glorious long voluptuous hair going down past my shoulders. I was walking my then puppy who is a Rottweiler. She was also giant for a puppy, 50 pounds by 13 weeks. We had a hard time socializing her because she was nervous around people plus most people didn't want to take the time to meet her because of her size and breed. Although she's really a big teddy bear. Anyways we walked past the fire station, and one of the firemen was out with his dog. We were talking, and my dog Osa was doing air bites towards him, puppy thing not aggressive thing which not everyone gets. He had a glove on, and just stuck his hand in her mouth as if to say, is this what you want? And she was so confused, but kept the softest bite on his hand. I wouldn't have let him do that, if I thought she would hurt him. This stands out so much, because my dog often gets discriminated by people. It felt great to meet a stranger who saw that my dog wasn't being aggressive, but was just being a goofball puppy. She also loved him after that point. I'm a white, 
overly educated guy that works for the university system. I was a bit out of place at the monster truck show I was attending. But I didn't care, monster trucks, yo. I had to use the restroom and the latrine was empty. I was at the urinal when another man, a very large, overweight, camouflage wearing dude comes bebopping in and pulls up to the urinal at the other end. This man farted so loud and so hard as he was taking a piss that the automatic paper towel dispenser behind us spits out a sheet of brown hand drying loveliness. We both looked at each other and started laughing. Not just haha, that was cool bro laughing. It was the funniest shit either of us have ever witnessed in our entire life. I honestly don't even remember if I pissed. We were laughing so hard that we were both hyperventilating. There was back slapping and bent over belly laughter as we were both pointing at the dangling paper towel in model. We eventually exited the restroom. Still laughing and guffawing. Me, a Yankee from way up north and this good old boy from the deep south, had a significant moment. I never got his name. But I will never forget how the air in that empty stadium latrine vibrated as this man broke wind. Oh man. Thanks for the laugh. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe for more videos.